Okay, welcome back to the series about the M Audio Oxygen Pro for FL Studio usage. If you guys are brand new to my brand Gratuitous, you guys can download my free book. It's called Five Keys to a Successful Beat. So simple it becomes creative. The book is about making beats in FL Studio. Uh, you guys are going to learn a lot of valuable things that I've learned over the years. If you're interested in it, you can go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys and you can download that book and I'll follow up with some emails. I offer a training platform with tons of FL Studio courses and more training and all that kind of stuff, okay? But in this video, I want to talk about how should a MIDI keyboard work in FL Studio. Now, this is how I have always used a MIDI keyboard with FL Studio and how I've gotten to know how to use FL Studio with a MIDI keyboard, okay? So a good workflow in FL Studio is, again, nice semi-weighted keys for when you're actually playing your melodies. It's just more enjoyable to play. But it really comes down to your transport buttons, okay? So we have stop, we have play, we have record, we have, uh, re um, not reverse, but it's like you go back a bar and forward a bar, and then there's the loop button. Now the loop button again changes between song and pattern mode. So right now you can see it's in pattern mode. So if I were to hit play, it's just, just going to play the pattern. I want it to go to the playlist and inside of FL Studio, you could easily just click here, but there's some things when it comes to workflow that you do want to get hands on because I was talking to you that when we have sliders and we have knobs, it's kind of deceiving because you think that you want that hands-on. That's what you've always seen in the studios when they're on those huge mixing consoles and stuff. But the thing is with FL Studio, FL Studio works most powerfully with your mouse. You can use your knobs and sliders. Don't get me wrong. They're very powerful if you use them the, the right way, but you're always going to get the best experience by using your mouse. It's going to be the most accurate, the fastest. Okay, your workflow is just going to be better with a mouse. But when we're making the beat, we want to try to make that process as fluid as possible. So for example, when we go from one melody to the next melody to the next, we want to be able to flow fast. And that all comes down to the transport buttons, okay? Right now we're in pattern mode. So let's say I want to listen to the song. So we're going to hop over to the playlist and I'm just going to hit the loop button. It goes to song mode and hit play. All right, if we want to pause it, you can hit uh, play again. Okay, if you hit stop, it brings it back. Now, if I click here and hit play and hit stop, it's going to come right here. If I hit stop again, it brings it all the way back. If you're in the playlist, you can go forward a bar, back a bar, and um, you have the record button. Okay, so my workflow inside of FL Studio, uh, let's just grab a sound. Actually, this is a pretty powerful sound. All right, so if we had this first melody, so the first thing is understanding a key and a scale. If you don't know about that, you guys can check out my piano course. It's called Piano Lessons for Producers, or you can join my training platform where you can watch all the courses. Uh, so we have to know a key and a scale because that's going to allow you to know what notes you're allowed to play. And so if I just play uh, the piano here, and I'll just go into uh, pattern mode. We're not going to play like the, melody, um, the whole song. Just going to click here so that now we're playing this citrus. Just kind of like strings. Okay, I'll hit play. Okay, so let's say we're like, yeah, I really, really like that or whatever, or whatever. So all I would do is, so right now pattern two is in here. I would go to a new pattern. And if you don't know my workflow, I always use the number pad inside of FL Studio. So the number pad, I always recommend when you buy a keyboard, the number pad, you can see it right here. Okay, so the number pad, I just hit, uh, go back to FL Studio. I'm gonna hit the plus. Okay, you can see my different, my different uh, patterns. And so uh, the fastest way is just to hit F4. F4 will give you a new pattern. So in this case, let's just say like uh, strings. I always write in capitals. You can hit F2 to give it a color. And so what I would do here, let's say we liked that. And I knew from here I liked it. So I'm just going to hit record. Okay. So let's just recap before I record. So we have our patterns up here. And this track is just really, really raw, really, really rough. As you can see, we get pattern one, pattern two, pattern three. Usually as I would go, I'd go like, uh, and again, I like to write in capitals. So you can see right here. 
We hit F2, give it a color. Uh, we'll go keys. Um, let's just use that same blue. So I push in my middle scroll wheel, hit enter, hit F2, we'll go keys, hit F3. There's that same blue. Hit the plus on the number pad. We'll come here. Um, we'll just go hi hats, give it a random color with F2. As you can see, that's all I'm doing. We will uh, zoom in here. Um, we'll click here. We'll go fast hats, F2. Okay. And these are the claps. So claps. Okay. So I'm just going to hit the plus on my number pad to go to a new pattern. We can do it that way. Or you could just hit F4 and it immediately goes to a new pattern. Again, when it comes to shortcuts, always look to like the side of the things. Right here, you can see that F4 is the next empty. That is how you can create a pattern fast. But again, I like the number pad. Usually, um, so let's just delete this one for example. So my workflow is if I was going to add in a new melody, I already know all of my patterns. As you saw before, it was pattern one, pattern two. Well, it's really unorganized, but you know, I know what's going on, but if you're looking, you don't know what's going on. So that's why I organized it. So now we, we both know what's going on. So if I'm on my very last pattern, for me, what I would do is I would hit the plus on my number pad. I know that I'm on a new pattern and uh, I'm highlighted on citrus, which means this is like that string. I did something like something really, really basic like that. I'll just uh, make this a little smaller. And uh, so usually, um, so this piano melody has kind of two different parts. It has like kind of like a beginning and then it kind of goes into like a fast dance section. So not to go too much into making beats and stuff like that, but Usually my tracks would be more like this, all right? We just have one loop that just goes over and over and over. And so if we're going to add a melody on, we would just keep adding melodies that are similar to this loop going on. Uh, but this track, it also has a beginning kind of part, which kind of transitions into the fast part. So if I make a melody for this part, it's not going to flow here. So it's essentially as if, I, I kind of cut it right here, let's just say. So let's just say we have a gap in here. So it's like these are kind of two different patterns, even though that they're in the same pattern. So it might be confusing if you are brand new. Uh, but typically, the track would just kind of be like this. All right, so... Let's just play around with it and make sure that I like that melody. So. Okay, so again, it's all about trying to find a melody that goes with that melody. Uh, we could even turn up the volume, it's a little quiet. Okay, so. Let me just break down the workflow if you're going to record another pattern inside of FL Studio, okay? So in this case, let's just say that the red highlighted section, this is the song. Let's just say that this stuff over here is not a part of the song right now, okay? So I'll just highlight this area right here with control and right click and hold. This is how you magnify into a certain area. And so this is the area where I want to record. And what I do is I'll use my number pad. You can see up here where it says keys. I'm going to hop down to the first pattern, which says pattern, because I know that I'm not using this pattern for anything. As you can see up here, we go to the claps. And uh, so you can click here to go to a new pattern. Again, you can hit F4, uh, but I just like the number pad. It's just what I've learned. It's very, very fast. So even before, like I, I usually don't label, like even, this is, if, even if this is strings, I wouldn't go F2 and I wouldn't type strings right now again i always write in capitals i wouldn't write in strings right now until i actually recorded it because i don't know what i've done i usually like to record and once it's recorded once it's kind of concrete then i will label so let's just hit record uh, i am going to enable this three two one i usually like that so record is on we are in song mode which means that the whole playlist is going to play when i hit play it'll count us in with a three two one that gives me time when I hit play, it gives me time to adjust my hand quickly. 
I was playing up here. Again, I can adjust my octave buttons. So if I want to play my hand down here. Um, okay, so all I have to do is hit play. Countdown's going to happen. Song's going to play. And anything I play will record into this pattern six. And then we can kind of quickly edit those notes together. And then I will uh, wrap up this video about how a MIDI keyboard should work in FL Studio. Okay. So again, this is all with the Oxygen Pro. Oxygen Pro, I really, I'm really, really happy with. Okay, so a couple of those notes played long. We will just delete these. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, sometimes things happen inside of computers. Okay, so I'll just maximize this. All right, so I'm going to press Control and Q just to quantize these notes, make them just a little bit bigger, easier to work with. Uh, I also hit stop a couple times just to make sure I'm all the way back at the beginning. Uh, if record was enabled, I just disable record. Uh, in this case, what is happening is it is highlighted. Okay, so it's just going to keep looping over in that section. And I will just hit play and we'll quickly edit these notes, making sure they're all kind of lined up. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to maybe bring this down. And I'll play this on the F. So this is how I use a MIDI keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. We'll delete this one and that one. Nope, so we'll drag these two over. And we'll just, uh, I'm just gonna press Control, or um, Shift and left click. This duplicates the note easier. This one is a little quiet, so I hold on Alt and the scroll wheel. Get to your, uh, Velocities, okay, so these are the velocities we're talking about. So if I hit a note on the keyboard, you can look in the top left, you can see it's hitting C5, and it's the different velocities, right? So this is the velocity here. You can change it afterwards as well, but it's all about workflow, it's all about, okay, so this is the power of MIDI. MIDI is so powerful. Okay, so we're going to kind of work work here. So what I would do is I'm just going to left click at three. As you can see, it just moved it, right? So instead of hitting play, so if I hit stop, it brings it all. And as you can see, the red here, this is the red that's highlighted. So we can actually go back and we can also click in here and you can see it moves. So what I'm trying to say is if I, hit, if I were to hit stop, it's going to keep playing from the beginning. But I already know that this beginning's fine. I want to start from three. So I just, I just click three. So it's a little bit weird here. So I'm not going to play the chords. Keep playing the G. Keep going with the G. Very, very quiet, right? We didn't hear it, so. Okay, watch, I'm gonna highlight these with control. Bring them up all just a little bit with alt, and scroll wheel. So, there's like duplicate notes on that one. That was kind of weird. So sometimes, you know, you just got to be aware of those things. As you, can, as you can see right there, there was a duplicated note on top of each other. It makes the note louder. And same here. So I can see that there's three notes there, right? But there's only two notes. So again, I'm going to hit from here from five. It will allow us to play the notes. Now, this I kind of like. I kind of like it starting with just a single note and then it goes into the chords. Gonna keep that going. Okay, so now this is where I use the MIDI keyboard. You can see that when I'm hitting the notes on the MIDI keyboard, it's playing it on the playlist or on the piano roll. 
So I'm going to bring the, the high note maybe down a little bit. This is just kind of like transitioning down to a, down to like the next bar. Okay. Now, to take it further, let's just like send this to a mixer insert with control and L. I usually always like to kind of like uh, process stuff a little bit. So load some compression on here, see if we can kind of uh, dial it in a little bit more. This is this little melody that we made over top of it. And again, that's just like the workflow with a MIDI keyboard instead of FL Studio. So you got to see um, how I recorded the notes. Um, you know, so first it really does come down to knowing a key and a scale when you're making your beats. Again, if you want more information on that, you guys can download that free five keys book from me. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. I talked to you about picking a key and a scale. Um, and if you want to learn more, you guys can come to itsgratuitous.com. Check out my beginner's course or my piano course or just join the platform where you guys can watch all of my courses. Um, I talked to you about the transport buttons. So with a MIDI keyboard, that's why I say having good transport buttons is is everything when it comes to workflow. I always talk about your MIDI keyboard is kind of like, you know, imagine a pilot and they're, they're in the cockpit and they have all their controls in front of them. This is at a much smaller scale, a much more simple scale, but essentially your transport buttons controls this music program, right? If I want the music program to play, it's play, all right? And so having good transport buttons is essential. This was not always possible. Uh, only, I think it was FL Studio uh, 20.7 or somewhere around there that they just introduced MIDI scripting. So there's the free MIDI script I have available to you guys. I'll show you how to install it in the next video. You simply install the free MIDI script. It gets your transport buttons working good. And then when it comes to like your knobs, uh, knobs and sliders and drum pads, again, it looks nice, but in terms of usability, um, as you can see, this is, you know, the melody I just created and we're inside the piano roll. And so essentially, once you record your melodies, the MIDI keyboard kind of goes away for a little bit. And then now you're with your mouse and keyboard, like, like a typing keyboard, right? Like if I want to highlight things, I hold down control and left click to highlight. If you want to highlight more things, you hold down control shift and left click to highlight more things. Uh, as you can see, we can... Um, we can go up notes with shift and up, or we can go up an octave. We can nudge the notes to the left, right? We can adjust their velocities. So if we just look down here, so since they're all highlighted, if we hold on alt and the scroll wheel, okay? So we'll go history and we'll go all the way back to, so shift note, transpose note. And I think it's probably around, around here. Okay. so. Again, that's just the fast workflow inside of FL Studio with a good MIDI keyboard that has the transport buttons. And so if you have the Oxygen Pro by M Audio, uh, you're gonna get a great experience. And if you guys watch my courses and stuff, that's my workflow. So you're gonna get a great experience if you wanna keep learning with me. Okay, so I'll wrap up this video. I just wanted to kind of give some more completeness as well as a bit of awareness to my teaching style. Uh, but we're gonna get to the next video, which is how to install the MIDI script. Uh, how to install that premium add-on, which you don't need. Just gives us a little bit better experience. Uh, and then the final video, uh, we will, I will show you how to set up your knobs, uh, your knobs and your sliders and stuff like that, uh, if you wanna use that. Okay, so let's get to the next video.